myself on to you. Sweat, Chet Moe, Dan Wiley, Matt Bouvier, and Dave Perry. Uh, just to give everyone a little bit of a background, uh, we worked with Professor Barbara Stewart of the Chemistry Department this year. Uh, she's actually traveling down to Honduras with the Water for Me organization to uh, work in a small village. And uh, in that village, they don't have enough, any electricity, so she doesn't really have a way to charge her uh, world satellite phone. So, so we set out to design a small, portable, but inexpensive uh, charging system using wind power. Uh, some of our specs. Uh, so our goal was to design and fabricate a uh, wind power extraction system at 8 miles per hour to charge a world satellite phone. We also wanted to target this system towards kind of any, you know, any, anywhere, any location that might lose power due to like a hurricane or something like that too. And keep it under $300 at that. Um, that was probably one of the, our biggest goals too. Uh, turbine design. Uh, this is a graph of a wind Haiti. <laughs> okay. This is a graph of the uh, actually provided to us by Professor Crosby of the uh, wind in, uh, in near our locations. You can actually tell that uh, uh, when we chose seven miles an hour because it seems like a good daily need uh, for most of the year. And if we design a turbine for that wind, it will uh, it will perform within the specifications that, that were required. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. So given that data. <laughs> Sorry about that. So given that data, we had about 7 miles per hour at like the lowest point during the year. So with our desired output that we wanted and the given wind speed, we were able to calculate out the size of the turbine we wanted. Since we wanted to keep this small and robust, we needed to make and ship it on an airplane, we had to keep it to you know, as small as possible. With that, we had a given size turbine and we wanted to calculate out the forces that would be created on the top of the turbine to make sure that our blades were durable and that we could also support it and uh, make sure that it wasn't going to fall over. Uh, the diagram on the right shows a uh, tower of guy wire system. Unfortunately, we don't have a guy wired outside right now because uh, the underground electrical system are not allowed to put spikes into the ground. And so right now it's set up with uh, sandbags. Uh, we have a free body diagram here that uh, shows that how we calculated out the tensions with the, with the generated forces at the top of the tower. Um, the free body diagram on the left shows that our worst case scenario is going to be when the uh, wind is hitting the tower at directly 30 degrees off from any cable. And uh, that's because it, at that angle, only one cable will be supporting the tower. So we had to make sure that if we did a system like that, it was going to be able to support it. So our original idea was like using a, a big motor which would produce enough electricity to basically charge the phone. But then after like, uh, Going over the data, and then we figured out that just the motor itself uh, weighs about 45 pounds. So uh, this would be like give us problems to the people who will carry it, so they can ship it for a plane. So then after that, we decided after that we decided to go with a stepper motor, but then we were trying to figure out that the stepper motor and the wing were not aligned. So then we had to use like. Um, a bearing lifter, so basically we can like align the shaft with the stepper motor and the bearing. But then we figured that that won't work because the stepper motor needs to rotate a lot faster than what we're going to have for wing speed. Okay, so I was in charge of building materials, and our goal was to use low cost material to reach our range of $300. Our challenge was to find a low cost motor that produced the right amount of voltage and torque. Uh, another challenge was buying versus making the turbine blades. Uh, we decided to buy them because they were lightweight and uh, they were balanced. Uh, and conduit versus uh, galvanized steel, that was for our uh, power. We ended up using our conduit because it was lighter and cheaper. So, uh, Testing. Uh, yeah, We tested it uh, with the, the our new motor that Stubb was saying. With a battery car drill, we hooked it up to the shaft and uh, spun it. And it started charging itself on at 200, or 200 RPMs. So in the lab, uh, with uh, Dave's uh, portable fan, uh, we reached uh, 100 RPMs uh, at 5 miles an hour. So as a group, we decided to uh, uh, gear it to the one ratio. It uh, worked incredibly well. And uh, this one started charging as little as 5 miles an hour. All right, so uh, here's a graph of the 
the motor we ended up acquiring, uh, one of our biggest issues throughout this project was, in fact, finding the correct motor. Uh, the motor that we initially had that was 45 pounds was also putting out about 50 amps, which is not what we need. We only need about one amp, honestly. Uh, so this motor, uh, compared to the other motor, uh, weight-wise, this motor was about five or six pounds. And here is the, uh, basically the output curve uh, voltage versus RPM, and then you also have amps uh, on the right side. And this is uh, a good linear curve, which is good to have for most uh, uh, DC generator motors, uh, because most of the motors that we've had are kind of, they don't go linear, they kind of loop down and they're inconsistent. So this was a good motor that we acquired. And we hooked it up with a 10 ohm resistor just to base off about what the our electric circuit would uh, have for resistance, so that's where we came up with the 10 ohm resistor. And as Matt mentioned, we ended up going with a 2 to 1 gear ratio uh, to help this charge the cell phone at less RPM. And here is an example of a center distance calculation that I created. Uh, originally, we had about 0.94 inches for a center distance. Uh, we ended up changing that to about 1.2 for a center distance. And then here you can see the final look of our project. Uh, as you can see, the, here there will be like the new motor and the way the gears are attached. And there there's like another challenge that we designed and manufactured as a group. That was our like uh, slip ring, slip ring uh, design because uh, in order to be able to rotate the entire motor, uh, we needed to have some way so the wires are not entangling. And basically here you can see the slip ring right there, and that's the way, that's the slip ring without the conduit, and there's like the whole assembly the way it looks. You're going to see it better in like a couple of pictures after that too. Uh, to keep down on cost, we, you know, we purchased blades, we purchased the motor, so we had to resort to machining for a few of the parts. Um, basically we, had to, we ended up getting rid of the arbor, which you can see on the end there with the, the threaded portion. Basically the hub mounts onto that with half 13 threads. The bolt holds the wings on. So what we did was instead of having a shaft attached to an arbor, we made it all one piece, and that cut down cost by like thirty dollars. Um, for the slip ring, the slip ring we were looking at was about eight bucks, and that was kind of that was going to jack up our price. So basically, what we did was we had a shaft that was mounted onto the bearing that set into you know kind of a, a cup-shaped piece that sat down in the conduit. Basically, what happened is the uh, the slip ring is a snug fit inside the conduit, and then that shaft fits on the top of the slip ring, so it, you know, it's held here, and then it's able to rotate around freely so the wires don't get tangled up. So, right, so the big challenge initially was that uh, the first motor we, we uh, had produced way too much uh, current that was going to smoke the cell phone, uh, essentially, or any other device that produced about 50 volts or about 20 amps at the RPM we were talking about. So um, I designed a circuit uh, to kind of uh, protect the uh, cell phone, regardless of what, what motor we went, we went with. Um, on the left hand side, if you look, uh, uh, I have a simulation of basically a variable output. Uh, the variable output from the generator will, uh, goes to a full bridge rectifier, which is a little uh, sort of square on its side, and uh, um, which is then uh, uh, regulated, the, the voltage and current then regulated using an LM317 uh, voltage controller. And um, I have a variable, a potentiometer here, yeah, but in order to balance uh, uh, the output between the in, between the in and the out, and I have a one-way dial to protect the phone from uh, uh, from being uh, destroyed, essentially. Next, uh, we also have to consider uh, safety issues. So we have uh, uh, the following safety concerns. We printed out uh, the 16 CFR, which is the standard for manufacturing safety. And we feel like we've addressed a number of these concerns. Unfortunately, if something happens, we as engineers will still be responsible for that. Next. And for that, we'd like to say thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank the uh, AWC. We did uh, some testing in there. With special thanks to Matthew Fowler and uh, Andy Goopy. Uh, all my RMIT professors this year, and over the past few years. Uh, Water for Media Organization and our sponsors.